The Kraft Food Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. was brought to you transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. And tonight, Kraft, makers and importers of the world's favorite cheese, wants to tell you about a real triumph of cheese making. It's Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese, already sliced and sealed by Kraft for your convenience. Natural Swiss Cheese is the kind with the holes, and Kraft Natural Swiss has what we call heart of the cheese goodness all through. We're sure this delicious cheese in handy packages will become one of your favorite foods. Try it soon. Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese. For a man who never got married, my uncle, a great Gildersleeve, sure pretends to know a lot about women. He thinks he's a real lady killer. Should have heard him when he came home the other night. Hello, Leroy. Hi, Unc. Hey, your hat looks a little big for you. Yeah, I just got a fresh haircut, my boy. Oh. A little short, isn't it? Well, I'm working up to a crew cut. Yeah, I don't think I'm too old for it. Do you? I'd rather not answer that. Hey. What? Why don't you leave your hair alone and get a crew cut for your mustache? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, think how much shorter you could smoke your cigars. <laughs> Leroy, you may not appreciate my sartorial splendor, but the ladies do. One of them must have gotten a whiff of your hair tonic. She just phoned. You? Miss Henshaw. She wants you to call her. Good. I'll call her in a little while. Do we have a date tonight? Back to home, Miss Gilsey. Yes, Bertie. I thought that was you. Leroy, did you tell it? Yeah. You tell me what? Leroy told me to remind him to tell you that Miss Henshaw told him to tell you to call her. <laughs> he told me. That's good. Ain't you going to call her? Yeah, there's no hurry, Bertie. She'll still be sitting by the phone. Yes. Get him. <laughs> well, Miss Henshaw depends on me to take her out. Doesn't date anybody else. She'll be waiting. Gosh, a guy gets a haircut and it goes to his head. This <laughs> <laughs> girl's be sure is confident, Leroy. I wonder if this is going to be the year. The year for what? The year when you and Miss Henshaw get married. Bertie, I have no thoughts of marriage. No, sir, but she might. Of course, it ain't leap year. Any year you get married, you start leaping. (laughs) Bertie, my relationship with Miss Henshaw is purely platonic. Yes. Is that good? Very good. It means we enjoy being together, but there's nothing serious between us. Of course, I can't help it if she prefers my company to that of any other man. Oh, no, sir. Unc, you're so modest. It's true, my boy. I rate A1 with Irene. Oh, brother. Yeah, I guess I better phone her and see what's on her mind. Hello? Yeah, Irene. This is Throckmorton. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Leroy said you called. I hope you haven't been sitting there waiting for the phone to ring. Oh, I haven't been sitting waiting. You haven't? No, no. I've been rushing madly getting my apartment straight. For our date tonight? No, that, that's why I phoned you earlier, Throckmorton. I'm afraid I can't see you tonight. You're kidding. I am not. <laughs> well, uh, don't be offended. I just thought since nobody else asked you out... Wow! Whoop. <laughs> you were about to say... I was about to say I'm meeting somebody at the train. Oh. A man? Very definitely a man. You well, didn't know. Time you realize that there are other men. Well, I know, but I hadn't thought of an out-of-towner. Old friend or some upstart? I guess you'll never know. 
Right. I intended inviting you to meet him, but perhaps it's better if you don't. Not Irene. What's he like? Who is he? Boyfriend? <laughs> Goodbye, Throckmorton. But, Irene? Irene! What's the matter, Russ? Lose your connection? <laughs> I think I lost my girl. What can I do for the water commissioner this evening? Yeah, nothing, Phoebe. I just thought I'd loaf a while with you. Yeah, well, well, but you didn't have to put on all that hair tonic just for me. <laughs> well, I had a date with Irene, but she's meeting somebody at the train. She throw you over for the engineer? <laughs> Phoebe, that's ridiculous. I don't know. She might like a well-traveled man. Yes, yes. Irene was very mysterious about this newcomer, Peavy. You don't change. Yeah. Just when you think you can count on a girl, she throws you a curve. Well, if a girl doesn't have a curve, she'd better have an angle. <laughs> <laughs> well, Irene could be just trying to make me jealous, but it won't work. I don't care who he is. Who do you suppose he is, Peavy? she give you any hint? She just said it was a man. Well, that sounds like a hint to me. <laughs> right, George, I'm not going to stand idly by while some stranger comes to town and takes my girl. I had the date first. Yeah, I think I'll stop by there this evening. My, my. You know, I've been thinking about it, and perhaps I owe Irene an apology. She probably thinks I was prying too much. I'll just go over there and see for myself. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I don't know if that's a good idea. Of course, I'll take her a box of candy. No, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> what have you got, Petey? Well, from what you said, I'd say you owe her about a seven fifty apology. Phoebe, that looks like a five-pound box. Well, you may need a lot of candy to make up with her. Oh? If you keep popping bonbons in her mouth, she can't argue back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take it, Petey. Well, yeah. yeah, I think I'll take her some flowers. I'll show that guy. Well, if you have more money to spend, take her some of my perfume. Why perfume? Because I don't sell flowers. <laughs> oh. Besides, you might say perfume is made from flowers with the juice mashed out, and it lasts longer. Look, with that new fellow hanging around, I want something in her apartment that'll remind her of me. Well, how about a bottle of distilled water? Goodbye, <laughs> 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 I don't mind barging right in on that Patinsky she's with. And I'm loaded. Candy, flowers, perfume, and a gift certificate from Holkin Brothers. <laughs> yeah, I'll crowd that meddler right out of her apartment. Why, Throckmorton. Hello, Irene. I didn't expect to see you. You have. Are you on your way home from the market? You know, no. These packages are for you. For me? Well, come on in, Throckmorton. Thank you. I see you have company. Yes, yes, someone I want you to meet. Hello there. Hello. You're a little older than I thought you'd be. Throckmorton, this is my father. Your father? <laughs> oh, he looks very young for your father. Uh. <laughs> Make up your mind, boy. <laughs> Well, uh, Irene, these are for you. All of them. Oh, thank you. What's your last name? It's Mr. Gildersleeve, Father. I'm very happy to know you, Mr. Henshaw. Mm -hmm. Why don't you two sit down and talk while I put these flowers in a vase? They're lovely, Throckmorton. You're glad you like them, Irene. A lot of packages, Mr. Gildersleeve. Aren't you a little late for Christmas? Oh, no. I gave your daughter more than this on Christmas. No. What did you say your first name is, son? Uh, uh, <laughs> Throckmorton. I'll try to remember that. 
Good. Oh, uh, care to have one of my daughter's bonbons, son? I'll open them up. Well, thank you. Hey, with price tag still on it. That PV. Hey, 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 seven fifty. <laughs> Are you sweet on my daughter, or don't you know what to do with your money? <laughs> right, George, Mr. Henshaw, I like you. You're all right. And I like you, too, son. Have a bonbon. showing you around town, Mr. Henshaw. I want you to meet a good friend of mine. You seem to be a pretty big man in town, son. Well, they can't do without a water commissioner, you know. Like I always say, nobody can take a bath without me. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah, hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hey, Mr. Peavy, I want you to meet Dad Henshaw. Dad? My, my. Glad to know you, Mr. Peavy. Well, I'm happy to know you, too. Uh, this is the gentleman Irene met at the train. You don't say. Yeah. Peavy, see if you can fix up Mr. Henshaw with a box of cigars. Very well. Make it Coronas. Well, the last Corona I had was given to me by the governor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid I'll have to get back to the office now, Mr. Henshaw. Care to come along with me to the city hall and meet the mayor? Well, I want to meet him, but... Uh... <clears throat> Why don't I uh, sit a spell and talk to Mr. Peavy? Yeah, just as you say. Well, happy to have you. Uh, take care of him, Peavy. I have to get back on the job. See you later, Mr. Henshaw. So long, son. Goodbye, Mr. Gonnickman. Goodbye, Peavy. Yeah, there goes a clever fellow, Mr. Peavy. Well, let me say I'm glad you got that impression. Yes. <laughs> He's been mighty nice to my daughter and me. Of course, I can see through him. How's that? If I ever saw a man in love, he's the pigeon. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve may be a pigeon, but I don't think he's ready to have his wings clipped. <laughs> well, it's about time a nice man like him settled down with a nice girl like my daughter. Well, Miss Henshaw is a, a fine young woman, all right. Yes, sirree. Oh, say, uh, you know, Mr. Peavy, while I'm here for the rabbit hunting, I might just attend a wedding. Well, I didn't know your daughter was considering Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, she's never been in any hurry. Well, neither is Mr. Gildersleeve. Then it's time I lit a fire under them. <laughs> yes, sir. Throckmorton has a good job, the respect of the community. Mm, yes. He looks hale and hearty. Yes, he'd make a fine son-in-law. Well, that could be. But they do say you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Ah, oh, humbug. I'll prod him up the aisle before he knows what's happening. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. One of the most delicious sandwiches in the world is also one of the simplest. It's that old favorite Swiss cheese on rye. And here's how to make that sandwich more delicious than ever. Just use Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese. Natural Swiss Cheese is that old familiar kind with the holes, you know. But now this Natural Swiss Cheese comes sliced and sealed by Kraft. And most important of all, comes with real heart-of-the-cheese goodness. In the wheels of natural Swiss, the cheese at the center, or heart of the wheel, has a better flavor and finer texture than the cheese at the outside edges. But Kraft Natural Swiss has this heart-of-the-cheese goodness in every single bite. Perfect nut-sweet flavor, fine, tender texture. Kraft Natural Swiss comes sliced and sealed by Kraft, Sealed airtight in handy half-pound packages. And it comes without rind, so there's never any waste or dried edges. You'll want to keep this delicious natural Swiss cheese on hand for all kinds of sandwiches. Kraft Natural Swiss is wonderful with different kinds of crackers, too. And for a delightful change some night, serve this good cheese with your favorite fruit for dessert. Tomorrow, get Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese with heart of the cheese goodness all through for your eating pleasure, sliced and sealed by Kraft for your convenience. Well, let's 
passed it back to Mr. Gillespie. He sure was glad when the gentleman dursting Miss Irene Henshaw turned out to be her father. Bertie could see the change in him. And because it was his girlfriend's father, Mr. Gilsey just couldn't do enough for him. He couldn't thank me enough for the cigars, Bertie. No, sir. Fine old gentleman. He thinks a lot of me, too. Oh, I'm sure he does. I don't know who you're inside to impress most, Mr. Henshaw or his daughter. Just being civil. Yes, sir. Is it going to be a civil ceremony or a church wedding? <laughs> no, Bertie, you know there's nothing further from my mind than marriage. Oh, yes, sir. And he's not thinking of me as a son-in-law. No, sir. Then you just hand him them dinners and cigars, hoping he'll hand you the hand of Miss Henshaw? Yeah, of course not. Anybody home? We are, Leroy. Hello, my boy. Help! I'm scarred. Leroy, what's the matter with you? I need nourishment. Food, sandwiches, milk, cheese, ice cream, root beer, root beer float. That's enough, Leroy. But look, I've been using my brain at school. All my energy went out the top of my head. <laughs> I'm weak and I'm wobbly. Please help me to the refrigerator. Leroy, stop clowning. <laughs> that boy. I'll get you something, Leroy. Swell. I feel better already. Yes, yes. Leroy, you're always eating. Uh, bring me something, too, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'll wheel you in the refrigerator. <laughs> hey, young, somebody asked about you at school today. Uh, Miss Henshaw? No, her father. He dropped by and I talked to him during recess. Oh, uh, that's so? I hope you made a good impression on him. Yeah. So did you. Uh, well, I know he likes me. I'll say. He's calling you son already. No, Leroy, he doesn't mean anything by that. <laughs> you have a plate of cold chicken. Oh, boy. Yeah, thanks, Bertie. Hey, Bertie, did you know Mr. Henshaw is calling Unc Son? Uh-oh. Miss Gilfrey don't think so, but it won't be long before Son changes to Son-in-Law. That's ridiculous. What are you going to call him, Unc? Dad? Pop? Father? No, Leroy. What do I have to call him? Grandpa? <laughs> Young man, I just explained to Bertie that Irene and I aren't serious about each other. His calling me son doesn't mean a thing. Yes, yeah, so you explained that. But there's only one thing that's clear. What's that? It won't be long before son changes to son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> What Bertie and Leroy said isn't going to worry me for a minute. Dad Hench, I mean, Mr. Henshaw, just likes me because, well, because. He, why does he like me? Yeah, the old gentleman spent some time talking to Peavy. It won't hurt to stop in and find out if he had any diabolical ideas such as marriage. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, son. Oop. <laughs> What can I do for you today? You can stop calling me son. I suppose that's a privilege reserved for Mr. Henshaw. Peavy, do you really think he wants me to marry his daughter? Well, Mr. Henshaw is of the old school, Mr. Gildersleeve. He seems to feel that if you're monopolizing his daughter's time, you're under a certain obligation. Oh, if Irene knew he felt that way, she'd laugh. Mm -hmm. wonder who's going to have the last laugh. <laughs> well, this thing has gone far enough. I'm going up there and set Mr. Henshaw straight. I'd be diplomatic about it, Mr. Gildersleeve. There's a man with a steel blue eye and a set jaw. Old school. You told me that, Peavy. Well, I'd remember it. Of course, I don't want to offend him. That's what I say. Yeah, I'll just go over there this afternoon and let him see by example that Irene and I have a very platonic relationship. We must now or never. Do you have any other suggestions how I can break the news to him delicately? Let him know I don't want to be his son-in-law? Well, this time you might give him a loaded cigar. Hey. <laughs> what a suggestion. Hello? Is that you, Irene? Yes, Father. I thought I'd better ring you up and let you know I won't be home for a little while. Oh? Uh, I thought I'd drop 
been on Throckmorton down the water department. He's on his way here. Before five o'clock? Courting during office hours? Well. <laughs> Why don't you come on home, Father? No, I think I'll make myself conveniently scarce. <laughs> don't be silly, Father. Don't you be silly, Irene. Throckmorton's a clever fellow. Fine boy. Yes, fine boy. Well, at least come home in time for dinner. I may ask Throckmorton to stay. Good idea. I'll be along after I stop by Phoebe's. Might talk him into going rabbit hunting tomorrow. I brought my gun along. Might as well use it. All right, Father. And you be good to Throckmorton. He's a good boy. All right, all right. Goodbye, daughter. Goodbye. He's certainly gone on Throckmorton. Well, he's been very nice to Father. I guess I should show my appreciation by being unusually nice to him. Just a minute. Let me see if my face is on straight. Why well, he wanted to come by this afternoon. Come in, Throckmorton. Hello, Irene. Uh, is your father home yet? No, no, he, he just phoned. He won't be home until dinner. Well, perhaps I should come back this evening. Who did you come to see? Me or my father? You. But I want your father to see me when I'm seeing you. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, but don't rush away. We'd like to have you stay for dinner. Yeah, thanks, Irene, but I, I don't think I should. Of course you should. Here, let me take your hat and coat. Well, can't I just leave them on a chair here by the door? I'll hang them here in the closet. She's lovely this afternoon. But I'll have to remain aloof, detached, impersonal. There. Now... Why don't we sit here on the couch by the fire? Yeah, you sit in the couch, Irene. I'll take this straight back chair here. All right. Trying to improve your posture? No, no. Well, what do we talk about? I don't know. We've never had trouble finding something to talk about. No, indeed. Nice day, isn't it? <laughs> no. It's dreary and looks like snow. Well, somewhere the sun is shining. Hmm. <laughs> well, if we can't find anything to talk about, we might turn on the television set. There's nothing on at this hour, is there? No, but we can turn it on and watch it snow. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you acting so strangely, Throckmorton? You be? Uh-huh. Well, you had a lot in my mind lately. A little nervous, I guess. Trouble at the water department? No, not at the water department. Oh. Well, if we aren't going to talk, I think I'll go play the piano. It's a good idea. Let's have some music. They say it's good therapy for the nerves. Do you have any new music, like Doggy in the Window? <laughs> I'm afraid not. Most of these are years and years old. I think this is the last song I bought. Well, that's one of my favorites. I'm in the mood for love. I didn't know she sang. Simply because you're near me. Funny, but when you're near me. I'm in the mood for love. Irene, you're wonderful. <laughs> Mind if I sit with you on the piano bench? Not at all. Don't let me stop you. Go ahead. All right. Heaven is in your eyes. Bright as the stars we're under. And is it any wonder I'm in the mood for love? So am I, Irene. Why, Throckmorton. Yeah, I can be aloof after Dad comes. Irene. It's oh. out there. Oh. Uh, hello, Father. What's going on? You out. 
<laughs> you uh, look flushed, son. Too warm in here for you? It's getting warm. Well, um, now, now that you're, you're home, Father, I, I'd better go see how, how the dinner's coming. Fine, daughter. Uh, you two can talk. Throckmorton could hardly wait for you to get home. Is that so? Well, here I am, boy. Son, what do you want to talk to me about? Well, uh, Don't I... be bashful. Don't be bashful. I thought you'd be speaking to me before I left. Daughter sings well, doesn't she? Yes, indeed. I noticed you were sitting real close so you could hear every word. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, now, Mr. Henshaw. Go ahead and speak your piece. I got here as quick as I could. Yeah, but... I came in a taxi, in fact. And the driver had the radio going all about a fellow jilting a girl. Oh? Oh, it's a sad story. Looked bad for the fellow, too. Scoundrel. What happened to him? Well, we were home before the end of the news, and I wasn't going to ride around the block at 30 cents a mile to find out. <laughs> yeah, I see. But if I'd been the girl's father, do you know what I'd have done? Don't tell me. But... Oh, wait, go ahead. Uh, you're going to ask me something. Well... Well, before you do, let me get a cigar for both of us. We'll be right back, sir. Just like Phoebe said, he thinks I'm obligated, all right. I'll get my hat out of the closet and sneak out. Zeke, he's got a shotgun in the closet. You want someplace, son? Yeah, I just remembered. Have to go to the depot. Meeting a train? I'm taking one. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. When folks drop by for a visit, make them feel welcome with something good to eat. What? Well, how about their favorite beverage and a plate full of crisp crackers and Kraft natural Swiss cheese? This good cheese with the holes has heart of the cheese goodness in every bite. And for your convenience, Kraft Natural Swiss comes sliced and sealed airtight in half-pound packages. Enjoy this delicious cheese often for a variety of snacks and sandwiches. Get Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese tomorrow. Leroy Frankson in the piano, is he? Yes, sir. You going out with Miss Henshaw this evening? No, Bertie, her father's still here. Yes, sir. <laughs> when you found out he wanted you for a son-in-law, you must have really skedaddled. Well, you know what they say, Bertie. He who fights and runs away will live to fight another day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, my goodness, listen to that boy. of money giving you music lessons. Yeah. You've been studying for years and you can't play a single piece. I can't so. I've been practicing this one. Oh? I'm in the mood for love. Oh, man. They play because you're dancing. Oh, good night, folks. Sleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Kathy Lewis, Lillian Randolph, Will Wright, Jack Meekin, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve.